Swaha. I'm doing this taping for 2025. <laughs> Uh, we are going into a new year, but I'm doing, you know, this is October the 10th of 2024 that I'm doing uh, this taping. So uh, I think it's the first thing that I should say is uh, my prayers. I meditate twice a day, so that's 20 minutes each time. So that's 40 minutes of uh, silence that I, <clears throat> I do not only for myself, but for the collective consciousness of the world, because... We, we, we tickle the unified field theory, you know, quantum physics. So w there is no separation between myself and every everyone else or yourself and everyone else and everything that's going on in the world. So if we can quiet the mind down and add some peace to the chaos that's going on, especially for Mother Nature, because uh, the people of Florida, North Carolina, I think Tennessee, Georgia, there's all these, you know, hurricanes that have... Uh, manifested over the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> and so um, I just want to let know those people that we hope you're safe. And uh, and I certainly, and I also do uh, chanting to, to uh, planetary mantras for 20 minutes. And then sometimes we'll do also other prayers and stuff. So well, we are trying to, um, you know, put some positive energy into this very less than positive situation. The physical world will be challenged, okay? I talked about this Pluto and Aquarius in my video. If you listen to it, I do talk about that. But I wanted to talk about 2025 and wish everyone a happy new year, even though we're still in 2024. Get a little swig of water. You know, even though we're still in <clears throat> 2024. Uh, I'm going to read some notes for you. i got a lot of dates and stuff to read off here. But 2024 will seem like a picnic compared to 2025 regarding planets changing into new signs. Uh, and I'll, I'll be going over that. Um, signs most affected in 2025. So these are the signs that are going to go through the most growth in 2025. Pisces, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Aries and Gemini. Uh, the other, it's not that the other signs won't go through any influences or changes as we go along in 2025, but they, they won't be going through as much changes as the signs that I've just mentioned. The signs of Aries and Libra have been going through the most changes over the last year and a half to two years, will continue to be influenced till September of 2025 from the moon's eclipses. Um, I want to, I wanted to give out the most significant changes astrologically during 2025, but I can't include everything. So I will post all the specifics on my website page, yogavisionaries.com with all the Mercury retrograde dates and the eclipses and what signs they're in and all that. If I gave you all that information, this would be like an hour long uh, uh, taping and most people don't have that much time. So it's already gonna be a, a good half hour here of information. So uh, since I'm doing this on October the 10th of 2024, I wanted to talk about some important changes coming up in 2024 that leads us into 2025. Now, Pluto moves into Aquarius as of November the 19th of 2024 and will remain in Aquarius till 2044. Pluto will not go back into Capricorn, okay, for another you know, we, we won't see it in Capricorn probably for another 248 years. So, you know, we've had this dance going on between Pluto and um, going into Aquarius and then Pluto going back into Capricorn. That's been going on, I think, since, uh, I think it's March of 2022, if I'm not mistaken on that, um, either 2020 or 2023, probably 2023. And um, so, it's retrograded going back into Capricorn in the very last few degrees. But now as of November the 19th, 2024, we have Pluto permanently in Aquarius. We are in the Aquarian age and Pluto is wiping out and purifying and renovating and doing all those things that I talk about in my Pluto and Aquarius video. Uh, you know, it's not fun, you know, and it can be, uh, it deals with birth and death issues because that's what Pluto is about. Uh, but they're usually the very first three degrees it has to settle in. 
So I call this the purification phase. So Pluto will settle in at three degrees around December of 2026. So we got all the way till the end of 2026, where we're gonna have massive purification from mother nature and also man-made disasters like war. And so hang in there, but this is the last hurrah of uh, less than positive energy in the world. It will come to an end at some point and uh, we will be moving into a new age, an age of enlightenment, the golden age. Uh, as far as 2024 goes to end it, Mercury will station retrograde from November the 26th, so this is the day after Thanksgiving, to December the 15th of 2024 at 22 degrees Sagittarius, and then it'll station direct at six degrees of Sagittarius. We have 50% of the planets in retrograde motion at this point. Retrograde encourages us to look deeper inside, to find answers and make plans for the future, especially in Sagittarius, which shoots the arrow towards the sky, okay? The future with optimism. Mars, the planet that gives us physical vitality and helps strengthen the immune system, will turn retrograde in Leo at six degrees on December the 6th of 2024. And Mercury will be in retrograde motion from, as I just said, November the 26th to December the 15th to close off 2024 with internal conversations that are not always comfortable, especially for the signs of Leo and Sagittarius, since Mercury retrograde will be in Sagittarius and Mars will station retrograde in Leo at six degrees on December the 6th. December 2024 is a great month to reflect on this past year and start making plans, Mercury retrograde for the future Sagittarius. Because Mars is turning retrograde on December the 6th, 2024, it adds fuel to an internal combustion. <laughs> so don't force physical advancements in the outer world okay so it's not a great the month of december is really very much a rest rest month of reflecting about what you did in 2024 and what you'd like to accomplish in 2025 listen to the internal dialogue that is going on and pay attention to your health especially excuse me for the signs of sagittarius leo and cancer those three signs Excuse me. <laughs> Every zodiac sign wants to start off the new year of 2025 with better health and a clear plan to move forward as Mercury will be out of its retrograde shadow at New Year's Day 2025, though it's stationed direct on December the 15th of 2024. Out of its shadow means that it's getting back to the degree it started its, its station retrograde on. So to get clearly out and get moving on. It's nice to have it out of its shadow right in the first day of the year. That's very good for all forms of communication. Uh, very good for the signs of Gemini and Virgo, okay? And of course, you're gonna have Mars retrograde, you know, for quite a while here, I'm gonna go on. Mars will retrograde into the sign of Cancer <clears throat> on January the 6th of 2025, where it is in its fall in Cancer. It's kind of weak there. For those who have sun, moon, rising, or planets in Cancer, you are healing from the inside out to Mars stations direct in Cancer on February the 24th of 2025, and finally leaves the sign of Cancer on April the 18th of 2025, moving back into Leo out of its retrograde shadow at the beginning of May of 2025. The sign of Cancer needs to love themselves and develop self-empowerment and not wallow in guilt or sorrow from losses in their lives presently or in the past. The affirmation for those with a plenty of cancer energy. You can do this once before you go to bed and once in the morning as many times. It's a self-love affirmation. So instead of wallowing and getting into the, you know, the, the you know, the weakness and the, you know, the poor, poor pitfulme kind of thing that water signs generally get into. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to say, I love you, and then your name. 
I think you're real wonderful, you're very special, and you're worth all the wonderful things that you can imagine. So if I was saying that to myself, this is an affirmation that I, I do because of, of children that have been brought up in abusive childhoods. It's very, very good. Any kind, Water signs especially, uh, earth signs next. The fire and the air signs tend to need less help with self-confidence because it's more male-oriented uh, energy. The feminine energy comes from the earth and the water signs. But if I was to say it to myself, I love you, Lou. I think you're real wonderful, you're very special, and you're worth all the wonderful things that you can imagine. Um, the sign of Leo needs to learn patience with this Mars retrograde period. Plans can get delayed, okay? And it, they may be ignored by others, which the sign of Leo, out of all the signs, can't stand to be ignored. Okay, that's one of the Leo traits is here I am, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they like, they like, they feed on that. And that's healthy, but, you know, if it gets to an extreme, obviously it's narcissism and, you know, it gets ridiculous, but it's a time for Leo to move more inward and learn meditation, attend a yoga class, or just get a nice massage to calm down and make any needed adjustments within to see better results in their everyday life. Take the time to visualize what you want and see it manifest strongly by the beginning of two, May of 2025. And that would go for everybody in terms of de-stressing the nervous system. Yoga is for everyone. So it's not just because I'm just using this as a way to say that, uh, you know, Leo may, may the, if you have planets in Leo, you know, your sun, moon rising, your planets in Leo, you may be uh, feeling stuck. And so you want to be able to listen to your internal dialogue more. And, that, and then when May comes, beginning of May, whew, you know, you take off uh, and you, you work with what you've healed. Also take high quality vitamin mineral supplementation. Andrew Lessman from Pro Caps is on Home Shopping Network, HSN. So look that up, you know, on the HSN. Find out when he's on. You get free shipping and he reduced prices and you get flex pays. He's got the highest quality vitamin and mineral supplements, um, you know, around. He's very, very uh, popular right now on HSN. And he's a light worker. So, you know, we, we need to support our light workers, especially when it comes to holistic health care, because we don't get that much support from traditional medicine. You know, the AMA, the F, F, uh, the Food and Drug Administration and the Federal Trade Commission, they don't really support holistic health care. Uh, they think we're a bunch of crazy people that you know, want to take some vitamin and minerals and you know, da, da, da. But they generally do research on vitamin and mineral supplementations that are not high quality, so they're not going to be that effective. And that's why they come up with uh, bad results. So tune into him. When Jupiter moves into Cancer on June 10th of 2025, those with sun, moon, rising, or planets in the sign of Cancer will have good luck like never before on their side. And this will be the opposite energy, okay, that they experienced while Mars was retrograding Cancer. Uh, they reap the benefits of what they have learned from January 6th to April the 18th. This is in 2025. If they did their homework of loving themselves and taking care of their health, they'll really start taking off and getting a lot of support in nature. Uh, good, good with finances, good with uh, relationships, okay, good with health, all those things. Pisces and Virgo are getting the most attentions in 2025, 2026 until the middle of 2027. And this is because the North Node will move into Pisces on January 13th of 2025. And out of the next nine eclipses till the middle of 2027, five of them uh, are either in Pisces or Virgo. If you have sun, moon rising, or planets in Pisces or Virgo, you are growing at a much faster pace than you have in years, especially for Pisces. Look at the houses that are ruled by these signs in your birth chart to see which areas of your life are affected. Uh, I wanted to show you now the minor grand trine chart because the major aspect that will start in, in May of 2025, and this energy really runs strong till May of 2029, is what's called a minor grand trine between the transpersonal, transcendental planets 
Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And these planets affect the collective consciousness of the world. So major world changes, and I mean big ones. Um, so we have here, this is a chart that uh, August the 25th of 2025, showing even on this day, there's the minor grand trine. This is a normal grand trine. Look how big it is, okay? But the minor grand trine has sextiles. These are opportunities coming from Neptune, okay, Neptune. And then we have um, Pluto here in Aquarius and then Uranus in Gemini. So Neptune in Aries, Pluto in Aquarius, and Uranus in Gemini are all involved in this minor grand trine. And uh, so let me just explain to you what that means. Uh, Pluto is already in Aquarius, okay, when 2025 starts. Neptune will move into Aries on March the 30th, all right? Saturn will move into Aries on March, um, I'm sorry, May 25th. Jupiter moves into Cancer on June the 10th. And Uranus will move into Gemini on July the 7th. The minor grand trine will be active, as I've said before, from May of 2025 to May of 2029 between these transcendental planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, the reason why I'm saying it's, it's quite a shift is because a lot of these planets don't change signs that often. These are more the outside planets. And the moon is the closest to the Earth, so it's going to change signs every two and a half days. <clears throat> you know, it's the fastest moving planet. And then you have the other planets like Mercury, Venus, Mars. Mars usually takes a couple of months. But when you get to Jupiter, it takes a year before it goes into a new sign. And then, of course, when you get even further than that, <clears throat> Saturn takes two and a half years to get go through a new sign. Uranus takes seven years to go through a new sign. Neptune takes 14 years to go through a sign, and Pluto could take anywhere from 13 to 20 years to go through a sign. So now you got Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all going into new signs. Pluto already in Aquarius permanently as of November the 19th of 2024. So that's a lot of change, you know, for in one year. Uh, so I'm going to explain to you what that means. A minor grand trine offers divine grace to manifest desires without any friction in the way. A trine between Pluto and Aquarius and Uranus and Gemini. Well, that's where the trine is. That, that's this one trine here between Pluto and Uranus. See that green line? Then the sextiles here are in the heart of that is Neptune, sextiling Uranus and sextiling Pluto. Saturn eventually will go into Aries, as I just mentioned, uh, and that's going to conjunct Neptune, and that's going to be an interesting time. So let me talk about all this so you understand more in English, you know, for those who don't understand astrology. Um, let's see. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. Higher knowledge being communicated, Gemini. That can provide deeper wisdom, Pluto and Aquarius, that is self-empowering and not traditional, but unique and effective knowledge that is new to our world. And Neptune wants to step forward with courage in Aries to allow a fight not only here on Earth, but a battle with less than positive extraterrestrial races that have been holding this planet down for over 30,000 years. Other extraterrestrial races want to heal the karma of this planet and move it into a fifth dimensional frequency. Okay, this is we're in a graduation period here on planet Earth. Uh, that we haven't seen over the last 40, 30, 40,000 years. Earth has been in third density for at least 30,000 years. So three dimension, meaning very physical, very flesh, flesh bodies. The bodies have become very, um, uh, not gross, but because we have beautiful bodies, but they're just not as, they're sluggish and not functional very well. You, you notice that when you turn, you know, 60 years old on, <laughs> you know, maybe even before that for some of you who, are, who have bad habits like drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes and taking drugs and all that. 
technology of light, okay, called Elohim Consciousness Light Technologies will start to be introduced, but we have to have a practical connection, Saturn and Aries, conjunct Neptune, that allows us to communicate with other races that provide this technology to heal and cure health issues and repair the DNA strands and activate the 85 to 100 billion neurons in your brain so the central nervous system can function normally. Neptune in Aries dissolves the boundaries. Uranus gives us the knowledge from a higher source, excuse me, not here on Earth, and Pluto offers transformation as we step into the age of Aquarius with new knowledge from several extraterrestrial races that are more, these are more benevolent human appearing extraterrestrials, okay? I'm extraterrestrial. I don't look like I got wires coming out. I don't look like, uh, you know, any any kind of big eyes and, you know, the, the grays, the Rosetta Reticula. I talk about that in one of my videos here. On, so you can listen to that. I'm going to just blow my nose because I'm, we have a beautiful fall day here. Uh, it's the high right now. It's 57 degrees. So <clears throat> October 10th of 2024. It's pretty cool. It's getting this is the coldest that we day we've had since the uh, this really the late spring started. <sighs> We're not complaining because New England states, by the way, we are in, living in the safest area in the United States of America. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, we have to go through the winter season and it's a pain in the neck. But we're not in Florida, we're not in California, we're not in Texas, we're not in the Gulf, we're not, you know, a lot of these places have been getting hit by tornado seasons and hurricane seasons and earthquake seasons and fire seasons and it goes on and on and on. Here, we do have some problems, but they're, they're, they're much, they're less prevalent than the rest of the area of the United States. So if you want to come to New England, enjoy our beautiful little states of New England. <laughs> <laughs> I grown up here. I love the green. Oh God, when all the trees get full and the evergreen trees are my favorite. Oh, the evergreen trees just something something heals me by looking at the evergreen trees. Green is a healing color. It's affiliated with the heart chakra. So, <clears throat> the most fertile months for this easy flow of energy, the minor grand trying to manifest for the signs of Aquarius. Gemini, Aries, Scorpio, and Pisces in, is in August, September, October, and November of 2025. The most intense month for this minor grand trying to manifest is 2025 is August. And see my video on exact dates for UFO contact, not only for 2025, but also for 2026 and 2027. Okay, it's July of 2026 uh, that we have the same minor grand trine, but instead of being at just one degree, <clears throat> I'm sorry, one degree, we are going to have it at four degrees. That's going to be in July of 2026. And then in June of 2027, we have the same exact minor grand trine, but it will be at six degrees rather. Than, so one, it starts off at one, then it goes to the four degree, July of 2026, and then June of 2027 at six degrees. So you can mark those months on your calendar. So we got August is the most potent, but August, September, October, November, but especially August around the second half of August of 2025, we may have UFO contact. So, or some kind of disclosure. I mean, it's going to be really, really incredible. Um, this is going to be a year that many light workers have been waiting for, uh, 2025, 26, and 27. Uh, let me see what I wrote here. Da, 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 da. I mean, uh, Neptune is at the center, at the eye of this minor grand trine, and Saturn and Aries <clears throat> will conjunct Neptune and try to help the sign of Aries fuel highly creative energies that can bring innovative approaches to education, healthcare, politics, religion, science, and economics. Aries can be impatient, but Saturn tempers the energy. So we don't get burned out from the intense Uranus 
electrical kundalini energy and transform Pluto life so fast that we end up blowing out our human nervous system for the downloads of information coming from higher dimensional energies. This is our time, and I'm, I'm talking to light workers who have been predicting major changes since the 1980s. You know, I talk about the volunteers, the original core group that started six to seven million years ago was 144,000 volunteers. I'm a part of that legion of volunteers. Um, but now we have several million, if not more than that. I don't, I don't know the exact count of light workers that really flooded in after World War II and have been coming and are being born presently, you know, as the for the new age. Wars in the world, okay, I put here. Wars in the world will be at our turning point with the minor grand trine starting in the month of May. Mother Nature will continue to react in this evolutionary process via natural disasters as the earth tries to purify itself, to alchemize itself to a fifth dimensional vibratory rate. This purification is strong from now until Pluto reaches three degrees in December of 2026. The financial markets will be affected. An open wound, Chiron, moving into Taurus, the financial sign in July of 2026, shows the instability in the financial world will need to be healed and replaced by a new financial system sometime between July of 2026 and May of 2029, introduced by other races that serve the great I am presence and not families of an international banking system. I just heard a psychic on YouTube talk, the big changes coming in 2050, you know, from... That's ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we can't continue the way we're going with the wars and the natural disasters until 2050 to have a financial change. So I, I'm not putting the other person down. I'm not mentioning any names here, but I just don't feel that that is correct. I think my dates are more on target. They will teach us, the extraterrestrials, the higher races, they will teach us to trust more in the abundance that has already been given to us. Read my chapter on the new economics for planet Earth in my Kindle book, Full Moon Messages from the Pleiadians, because we will be moving into small family groups, bartering, and, and included in that, integrated, is higher technologies from other races that are anywhere from 3,000 to literally 100,000 years ahead of us. They're going to help us, or sometimes even millions of years, depending on if we can get the higher realms, like the 7 to the 12th dimensional beings, Lord Ashtar and the Ashtar Command, and, and, and Jesus Christ, and Lord Krishna and Buddha. They're all way up there, Moses. And if we can get them to help us, um, they, they don't usually, they can't lower their vibration. Uh, they can lower it as much as the beginning of the, like after the third level, there's 12 levels in each dimension. There's 12 dimensions all together. They can lower it to about the third level, maybe the fourth level of the fifth dimension. So we're in the third right now. We're alchemating to the fifth. So that it's hard for them to show up personally, which is reason why uh, the UFO community get, gives more attention to the Zeta Reticuli because they're in the fourth dimension. So <clears throat> it's more of a physical experience even though it is spiritual too, but it's, it's, it's really not. Um, anyway, I go over that in my, uh, my, my team, who is Lord Ashtar, Bashar, and the Zeta Reticuli, the Greys. There will be times when the world looks like we are headed for a major nuclear situation. This will be stopped if implemented in any way by other races that are more evolved in their technologies than ours. They will not allow the use of nuclear weapons from the sky, oceans, or land to be used like we did with the atomic bomb in World War II. This may be the turning point for the world to open up to other opportunities represented by the Mitre Grand Trine active, again, from May 2025 to May 2029. If the Earth is in deep troubles, such as an emergency, which I don't see happening, they can evacuate this planet in 15 minutes via millions of spaceships and some of them as large as a planet, okay? But I don't, you know, that plan was 
It's supposed to happen in the 1980s, but then because the vibration has come up so much, they have it on standby. But they, they've done this before, okay? The Galactic Intergalactic Universal Confederation of Worlds in the light, higher beings, they've evacuated other planets uh, in the past, so they have experience with that. There are um, different extraterrestrials that are specialized as first help helping make first contact to a planet so when these <clears throat> minor grand trines are active we could see that it being implemented slowly at the beginning you know maybe you might have you know several countries saying what's going on you know they're getting visited or whatever uh that 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 should really help activate a lot of changes but then it may increase as you go into the minor grand trine in the july of 2026 and then in June of 2027. So I would say, excuse me, it's like a three-phase three phase plan that's going on with this minor grand trine, opening these doors to higher dimensions and to um, other extraterrestrial beings that are benevolent and want to help us. They're not here to save us, okay? They're here to re-educate this planet so that we can have a better relationship with ourselves, with the laws of nature, and calm everything down and clean everything up. Uh, they will they will have advanced technologies that can clean up all the pollution in the air in a matter of, you know, a few months. Uh, they also have um, light technology that they can beam down in different areas on the planet that are polluted, such as the slums of India, Philippines, Africa, South America, Central, everywhere in between, where people need a sanitary place to go to the bathroom, they need food, they need shelter, that they're gonna help us with that and show humanity that they really want, they're benevolent. They're not here to, to cause any problems, but to try to you know, um, help humanity uh, stop the suffering. And that, that's very important, especially with, with uh, world hunger and all that. <clears throat> um, you're going to love this one. It, it is this new city of Jerusalem spaceship that could lift the people of Israel out of their troubled area and create more of a connection with the United States of America and higher ET races as the surrounding Arab nations are shocked when they don't find anyone in Israel wondering where did they all go. Okay, this is a, <clears throat> a spaceship that is, has been in parking orbit, so to speak, it's, since the 1980s. Uh, supposedly, it is 1,500 to 2,000 miles wide, called the New City of Jerusalem, uh, because they, it, it's just so negative in that area. They need to take them out of there. <clears throat> They're never going to heal that that area. Uh, sorry, I'm mucusy. I, I you know it, it's to, it's starting to get very cold. So uh, my my allergies are sometimes active. You know, and I don't have bad allergies, but you know it's enough to you can hear it. You know, sometimes I get mucusy. Um, I don't take any pharmaceutical drugs at all. I drink a lot of water. I meditate. I've been meditating for 46 years, twice a day. Never stopped, never went back. You know, release the stress, drink a lot of water, take some high quality vitamin mineral supplementation. Andrew Lesman on Hub Shopping Network, I've already mentioned his name. And uh, take care of yourself. Uh, do some regular exercise, at least 20 minutes to a half hour a day. Yoga poses are very good for you to stretch, especially when you're getting older. Um, Uh, we, I put here, the people of Ukraine are also watching, not only, are also being watched, I put, not only by NATO nations, but also by a galactic intergalactic confederation, as the war in Ukraine will also make great strides in 2025 to push Russian soldiers back into Russia. We could see a more aggressive approach by NATO in 2025, especially around May, with Saturn moves into Aries and vice versa, more aggression from Russia and its allies such as North Korea, China, and Iran. So humanitarian aid that needs to get to troubled areas all over the world will be more of a priority from those who can afford to help. Um, so I am saying, getting back to the war in, in Ukraine and Russia, that it's probably going to get minimized at some point. 
I think Russia is going to lose the war, <coughs> is my point. Um, and the interception of intergalactic UFOs and stuff like that is going to take the attention off of these wars big time. It's going to trip up the social hypnosis on this planet. And people are going to be really, really um, turning to spirituality over the next couple of years, believe it or not. <laughs> I've been waiting lifetimes. It's been over six million years. I've been waiting for the whole world to kind of get involved. Of course, we, we, we have had times, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 year periods on this planet where we have had total peace, total harmony. So we do go in waves going up and down, up and down over the years. But I put here, um, humans on earth will turn more to spirituality, put less focus on gains in the material world as natural and man-made disasters cause the financial markets to weaken from May of 2025 till the end of November of 2026, even December, you could say the end of the whole thing, moving into 2027. People are waking up. Uh, see my video on Pluto in Aquarius. For more information, investing in human life may be the outcome of all we learn from May 20th of 2025 to May of 2029. Invest in silver, gold, and real estate currently while maintaining portfolios in the stock market, but more limited. Find ways to hold your own silver and gold if you can afford this in a safe place other than in a bank. Money, as we know, in any physical form will not be attractive after humans are introduced to a new way of looking at economics as mentioned. I go through this in my book uh, a lot <clears throat> more specifically. There is no mon physical money in the upper dimensions. Okay, they don't have bills and mortgage payments and car payments and all that. They don't put they haven't put themselves in a position where they're enslaved by a family of international bankers. And, you know, that's not the international banking's fault. That's our fault. We've invested in that. <laughs> if, we don't, if we don't want to empower them anymore, then we hold on to our own money and we, we find a different way to work with ourselves in the age of Aquarius. It's about working in smaller groups, no more than 100, and, and helping each other, bartering, and um, working with higher technology that will be introduced. You'll see how that works together. The uh, automated intelligence, AI, will be eliminated at some point. Uh, it's not coming from a place of hmm, spirituality. Uh, it is, um, it's not dangerous, but it can get dangerous. But by the time these changes happen over these years with these minor grand trines, we're not gonna need automated. And automated intelligence is gonna look like nothing compared to what we're gonna be getting involved with with the Elohim consciousness light technologies to revitalize the planet, revitalize our health. We'll be moving into a semi-flesh, semi-etheric body, a new body we're gonna get. Uh, and what Lord Ashtar calls the molecular cellular shift, okay? And for those who are meditating regularly and drinking a lot of water and taking some supplements, taking care of yourself, stay away from cigarette smoking, cigar smoking, uh, drugs or anything else that can harm you, even marijuana, they're finding, you know, we have, they haven't done a lot of research on that. When they do, they're going to find that marijuana has some bad side effects. But for those who need it for their health issues right now, they're in a lot of pain. God bless them. You know, I, I, I support that, you know, but I just don't. I, meditation it gets you so high anyhow. You're, gonna, you're not going to want to <clears throat> smoke marijuana once you have a, a direct experience of that bliss deep down inside of you. And I teach inner grace meditation. So if you want to learn how to meditate, you can get in touch with me. Um, humans should not always live in fear that there is not enough scarcity. This is not healthy economics. We always have had enough, and this will be shown to us soon. So you never have to worry about your physical and spiritual safety. One thing is for sure, we will be forced to change regardless of how we feel as a collective social complex. We will not have a choice but change the way we look at life and claim our self-empowerment, okay, Pluto and Aquarius, that the minor grand trine is offering, Neptune in Aries, Gemini, uh, Uranus and Gemini, <clears throat> an opportunity to grow in the direction of peace and joy 
rather than violence and war. Many blessings to you and your families wherever you are in 2025, 2026, and 2027 as we go through these changes. How do you like my new crystal? Look at how beautiful. This is selenite. Selenite, uh, very connected to the Palladians. And then this blue kyanite. Isn't that beautiful? This crystal is it, it, wrapped in copper. It's um, created by a, a, a girl who uh, is, she calls herself the metaphysical chick. <laughs> so the metaphysical chick.com probably you'll be able to find her there. I should tell her her name, but I forget it. It's kind of, yeah, I don't have it. I have www.themetaphysicalchick.com and uh, I, I forget her name. It's, and um, I should have it. I'm so sorry about that. But <clears throat> she, uh, she makes these uh, beautiful, beautiful um, crystal pendants. And this one was really meant for, I felt, because the Palladians feed on lunar rays. And selenite is uh, connected to that lunar ray uh, vibration, <coughs> but also helps to channel and to clear my mind for readings and stuff. You can tell I'm going to get some water out of it. I just want to wish you a happy 2025. Again, all my prayers as I started off the video with are with everyone who is suffering everywhere. You know, may this suffering stop and may God bless all of you, keep you safe, you know, and keep you open-minded to these new changes coming up.